Welcome gamers to Gladius Relix Awards, a Warhammer 40,000 game. Excellent game, incredible AI, and we have a new DLC, the Drukhari, the Dark Elves. And I wanted to just go through how to approach it, how to play it, if you uh, sort of are wanting to know whether to uh, grab this DLC. I will just say right up front, uh, if you're a new player to Gladius, do yourself a favour and just play some of the simpler factions first before you, before you start to play something like the Drakari. They really are probably the hardest of the factions to play, but they're quite good fun once you get a feel for it. It takes a lot of, not micromanagement, but a lot of management of your forces and knowing what does what, and then planning accordingly. So it's it's quite a, quite a fun game to play as a more complex um, faction within the Gladius um, universe or the Warhammer 40,000 universe. Uh, so they are raiders, they're pirates, um, they're good fun. I'll just go through the mods that we're going to be using very, very quickly. So uh, now if you just go to extra and then mods, we are playing with a couple that just enhance the tool tips and information. I've got, um, I've turned off the more map sizes, options and difficulties just so we're playing in a, in a vanilla in a vanilla environment in that sort of sense. Um, I've got the Gladius Plus, the various Gladius Plus at, um, at rescaling. This doesn't change the gameplay at all. I've got my little tweaks, which has to be put above Gladius Plus and also above the Drakari Plus. So these, these don't change anything in the game other than visuals. So don't worry about those. I've got too many voices, which won't actually impact this particular run through because there's no voices that have been modded in for the Drakari at this stage. And friend, friendly territory just allows you to move a little bit faster through friendly territory through your through your rear areas, uh, which you don't even really notice, but it does make it a it makes a it makes the game feel better when you're playing it. It's not as onerous trying to sort of move forces through areas where there's no threat. Uh, that's all we got. So let's just go back out. Before we get started, special thank you to anyone who supports the channel, whether that be through Patreon, through Coffee.com, uh, through um, through merchandise, or through um, the membership here on YouTube. Uh, there's all links down below in the description if you are interested. So thanks, guys, for that. Uh, let's just get and start a new game. Now I'm going to be playing pretty much on the defaults for most things, except I'm playing on hard. I'm playing with the Drukhari as the actual faction we're going to be playing. Uh, randoms across the others, we don't know what they're going to ultimately be. Just a medium world size. Now it is a bit of an advantage if you, you can see the medium recommended for four players. I would suggest if you are wanting to sort of get a bit more of a feel for it, you know, maybe even play large but with only with four players or something like that, just so you get a bit more of a feel for how the faction does work. In fact, I might do that just to sort of show that because it means you're going to end up with more webway gates that really should be available to you for most of the game. So that's going to be a benefit. So let's just go and play on a large, which is recommended for six players, but with only four players playing. Uh, we'll do that one. The land mass is really the um, is how much land there is. Now, I my preference is to play on high land mass, but I'll keep it on medium, which is the, the game default. Uh, the game pace I'll keep it standard. My preference is to play on slow or very slow, but that will then change the the goals that we're going to have for ourselves. We're going to have different goals for when we want to be establishing our second city, our third city, what type of what type of uh, force we want to have by certain stages in the game, things like this. Now, the game will also dictate a lot of that to us. Uh, under advanced, I have turned off quests, but everything else is on default. By the way, there are a few extra little tweaks that you can do now through here, like required technologies per tier or maximum technology tier that you can go to. Um, research technology where you can start from so these are quite cool so there's a few other little bits and pieces now in the game let's just go and get started watch the uh, we we'll watch the cutscene we born into the war in heaven the war with no victors yet we survived we thrived we ruled for uncountable eons, this galaxy was ours, and we gloried in it. Deeper and deeper into excess, until we birthed a dark god. We regret nothing. Only the weaklings were swallowed. Only the craft world fools stepped. We learned and adapted, tormented. 
scientific or race to prolong our days. In chaos, like Gladius Prime, we glory. We raid, kill, take. Eldari, we are no more. Today we are Drupari. And this planet is ours. So the Drukari are raiders, they're pirates, basically. So this is why they're difficult to play, because they, they um, it's also why they're fun to play and also why they do have advantages if they do certain things in a certain way. So there's sort of a bit of a combination of different sorts of approaches and different sorts of things in there that we need to have, have a bit of a look at. Now, whenever you start a game, always evaluate, uh, like get, first of all, get used to the faction uh, and get used to what they require and what they need. Now, I'm just going to I'm going to show you how to do that to a degree, but I will actually just quickly go through my take on the Drakari. What what resources are important? Uh, now, if we have a quick look up through here, we've got food, we've got ore, we've got uh, energy, we've got research, which everyone has research. Basically, that's one global one that everyone's got, and we've got influence. Now, different factions will have different things that are important to them. Uh, in our case. Our most important resource that I'm finding that I sort of run out of a lot is ore. So ore is vitally important that we get hold of that one. The second most important one, again, according to me, and there may be look, there may be differences of opinion. Please write in the comments if you feel something you know should be could be done differently or should be done differently. Uh, I always find that very very valuable, and I would recommend that people actually read through the comments to see what people are so saying about different ways to approach the game. So anyway, for me, ore is number one. Number two is influence. We use this for all the special things that we do. We spend a lot of influence, so we need a lot of it stored up. We need a lot of ore stored up. Uh, then following that is food, which is how we then build our. Um, our infantry, so the infantry is important with that one, and uh, then finally we've just got the uh, the energy. Now, as I said, research is on it's in its own little category, but the energy is also uh, fairly important. Now, to evaluate what we can do ultimately is we always start off at one of the webway gates. We don't we can't go and set up our own city. So this we always uh, inherit. A city we've got no choice since in through here now in this case we've got recaf leaf down through this other side which is going to give us a boost ultimately if we if we actually build that into the city of some loyalty at 20 percent loyalty which is actually one of our one of our problems is loyalty so that would be good um, it would be better if we were had this fermentation pool where we had growth city growth so we could actually grow in faster but the, the only places we can sort of then go and grow into would be this one back over through here for example um, up into here, so that all the, we can see all the webway gates. You can see it in the mini map actually where they all actually are. Um, there's another one down here, for example, as well, and another one back over here. So this is probably the most likely spots that we're going to be able to ultimately grow into. So to evaluate this, the easiest way is to go Control Z or Control Z and turn on what you can see through here. Now you can see through here, food is. Around the actual the cap circle, the, the circle around the capital or around the city, the city cap is or city city circle is we don't actually have any food. Food is negative all the way around until we go out to this level through here and on, along this river we have a, a little 20%. So it's not great for food, but food, as I said before, is not critically important. What we're really looking for here is um, is we've got a little bit of influence there, which doesn't really that's not going to really make much difference one way or another. There's no influence certainly around the outside edges. There is there, that's good, and there's food there. So this one here we end up with um, with um, with ore. So we can definitely build everything to do with ore from this particular location. And we could then actually maybe make something like this our second city to then start to cap the um, the influence. The influence will be very important. Back up through here, ore, and not much else. Back down the bottom through here. Again, ore, no food. This is ore and energy. So I'm thinking that this will be what we target for our for our second city. Now we're at turn one at the moment. We're going to be wanting to get to that city by about turn 20 
between 20 and 25 is really where we've been wanting to sort of be with that one. So the reason that awe is the most important, followed by, you know, influence, followed by food, followed by energy, really comes down to the sorts of buildings that we want to have, the sorts of, um, the sorts of uh, effects we want to be able to do. Uh, like, for example, if we are right next to a webway gate, these guys do have the ability to travel through webway travel, and it will cost a little bit of influence to do that. So if we have a whole army wanting to get through these webway gates, it's gonna cost a lot of influence just to move them, but we can move them anywhere. We can, for example, go on the other side of the map, go to this location here if we wanted to, and actually go and claim this for 10. So for, for 10 uh, influence, we could go and actually click on this one and actually claim that one and then travel through it or just spending influence. And this is how we do our rating. So we can actually move, we're very, very maneuverable as long as we actually have webway gates to move into. All right, let's just start, uh, let's just get started with the actual build queue. In the, uh, initially we start off with these warrior units, which are slightly under strength, but all of our units are. So just be aware of that. We are sort of glass cannons. We can do reasonable damage but we do we don't we're not very strong ourselves our heroes are also very very weak so don't use them don't rush them like you would for example if you're playing the tyranids or the uh, or the orcs these are not strong leaders they're more support a bit more, more like astra militarum in that sort of in that sort of instance if you've been playing the game uh, so don't rush the heroes um, certainly either focus on infantry and or the um, the vehicles vehicles are very good in this for the uh, drukari uh, and in our case because we've got so much ore around us we're going to be focusing on vehicles as our number one go to for for setting up this particular city and then once we get this city with the food we'll then start to sort of then get more infantry at the moment we've only got plus two food coming in which is not good <laughs> <laughs> back in through this other side. You know, let's just let's go press Control Z. Unfortunately, we've got a negative 20 at this city. It's almost worth restarting, but I won't. I'm just going to go Control Z. So that's where we are. Um, we start off with two uh, Cablelite Warrior units. So we've got both of those. You can see that they move. They move a fair distance, so they're fairly maneuverable. Um, but let's just go and claim this is extra food for us, which is going to be helpful. So we're going to be needing to do that one. Rule of thumb with this, always try to keep your units within within fairly close support of each other. So we'll just claim that one through there. And we can see that there's something else way over here. Rather than rush into it, I'm just going to move into here, just in case there's something else there. That's going to be energy for us. In fact, there's um, some crew hounds down over this other side. So we'll uh, we'll wait for them to come and attack us. Unfortunately, we do actually have a fair bit of water cr uh, creeping into where our, our circle will be for our city, but ultimately we'll be okay with that one. Now the city itself, we don't actually have, if I just double click on this one, we don't actually have a third slot in here. So the first thing I want to be building is research. Now, uh, the second thing I want to be, be building is my, um, is my vehicle building. So, or if I had food, I would be building my infantry, like this one in through here. You can see there that this one is the uh, Cablelite Stronghold. And so this one does provide extra food, extra influence, uh, gives me an extra population limit. But this would be sort of where I'd be heading. It's still going to cost me a bit of ore to do this one. But ultimately, I haven't actually got the research yet to build the vehicles, but we're going to focus on that after we, after we, well, pretty much right now, actually. So let's just go across. And really what we want to do is we want to reserve the um, the high level um, ore areas and production areas for producing what we want. Now, God, this is one of these tricky situations where I want to be building my, my vehicle factory here I want to have actually all mines in through this side. So I'm, I'm thinking I can go into either one of these locations for my um, for my research. I might just spend the, the couple of turns it takes just to, to acquire tiles. I'll just grab this one. Just, actually, this one here has got three. So I'll just go and grab that one there. That would just give me three building points so that I can then build extra little bits and pieces into that one. Okay, we're now going to be choosing our research. I'll just go through the progression that we're aiming for. What we want to do is we want to get to found the Raider Fortress as quickly as we possibly can. 
what we're also trying to do is we're not trying to build up a strong army initially what we're trying to do is is we're trying to build up a strong army as long as it doesn't interfere with our with our economy so we want to be a step focusing on economy we can only get we have to get two from tier level one now if i can get the dark foundry that's going to let me produce the vehicle so i'm going to grab that one to start with that's the first one that we want to have the star scraper is where we get our heroes but they're not really valuable for us in the in the early part of the game but they do open up the plasma grenades eventually and these can be useful if you do need them it's not critical but there's nothing else really much better than the star scraper as my, as my number two once we've got Dark Fortress, Star Scraper, it then opens up Tier 2. From here, what we want to do is we want to get the caged in so we can actually increase our population limits. And we also want to definitely get the Haywire Grenade. We probably want to get that one before this one, actually, so we can start to make use of this one here. This one allows our Cablelite Warriors to be able to then fight, throw these incredibly good anti-vehicle grenades and anti-building grenades. And these are really, really strong against, uh, against vehicles and buildings. Uh, from there, in Tier 3, we then have the Found Raider Fortress, and we then get the Cult Arena. And then on the Tier 4, what we want to then go for is the Scourges, which are jump infantry but with very, very good anti-vehicle attacks. So our base is going to be to get Scourges. We start off with the uh, with the Cablelite Warriors, so that's the unit that we have all, already from the front. And we then want to mix them up with the Raiders in through here. This is a, a, a versatile assault transport vehicle. Uh, the Scourges have to be on the Raiders. And then we can just use this, the, what, uh, there's a thing called a Venom, a Venom um, vehicle that comes by default with the Dark Foundry. So, uh, and I'll show you that actually. I might as well do that one now. I'll just click on OK. And so it's exit city and it's in, then just me then turn i'll just quickly go through how to approach and how to look at the actual factions so always just go to the compendium up through here uh, i like to first of all start with the actual faction itself and have a bit of a read through now i won't spend much time with this there's um uh, because we're going to, I'm going to be showing you this anyway but have a read through you can see there it says that the initial challenge is hard i would say it's harder than hard I'd say very hard um, this is probably the hardest of them that I can think of that, that I've played with the game uh, but it is as I say it is rewarding it is good fun a lot of information there so anyway that's the a good thing to sort of see with the factions also if you come up against an enemy have a look and see what they've got as well uh, buildings is actually the next most important thing to have a look at not so much because of the buildings but because of it shows you the progression of the units and if we go to Drakari You've then got things, for example, like this is your, uh, it'll then show you the two different types of aircraft that you can have in through this one. If we go down to the uh, Dark Foundry, which we want to go and get, you can see there there's a fair few things ultimately we can start to unlock as we go through the uh, progression. Anything that's blue means that research will be required to get this one. But we do start off with the Venom. And the Venom has just got, only got a 1.5 or upkeep. That's one benefit that we do actually have is the upkeep on our units is very low, but they're a bit squishy as well uh, so we've got like the venom we've got the reavers we've got the raiders uh, we've got a chronos which is sort of like the healing type type monster uh, we've got a ravager and then finally we've got the tantalus which is sort of like the top of of our um of our vehicles and you can see there that most things here are requiring ore uh, all the way through except for the chronos which requires food if we then go down to the Cablelite Stronghold, which is how we get our, our, um, our infantry, you can then sort of see we've got a fair few different infantry. Now, our basic unit is the Cablelite Warrior. This is a poisoned range basic infantry attack. Now, when you see the word poisoned, it means it's good against other infantry, and that's pretty much it. Not good against much else. Uh, you've got specialised things like the Witches, which... I wouldn't worry too much about these at this stage, to be honest. I, I suggest going straight from Cablelite sort of bypassing these. The racks are inter interesting because they can take out wire weed. If you need to get rid of the wire weed, then the racks are a good choice. But you really want to sort of be going through and just going straight for the scourges because of the anti-vehicle. It gives you a good, a good mix of having good anti-personnel with the Cablelite Warriors and good anti-vehicle, anti-buildings with the scourges. Three scourges can take down a city fairly fast. So just be aware of that. Uh, these can also help, the Cablelite Warriors can help 
if they've got those haywire grenades. So they can also then help them take down cities fairly quickly. Then you've got sort of like other things. But you'll see there that the actual upkeep, like the Incubi, for example, is a powerful melee infantry, but it's only got two food upkeep. It's very cheap. These are not strong units. Once you get a bit of a feel for this sort of stuff, uh, you can then sort of come through. You can see that this is all food, but it's cheap food upkeep. It's not really something we have to, it's not like expensive. If we then go away from the buildings and go on to units, we can then actually go specifically and have a look at the different types of units that we want to actually have a look at. Now, the Archon is, is the entry-level hero, which we will be wanting to get one of these fairly early on. They have different benefits that they can provide, like they give sort of like this one gives a, an accuracy bonus, which is actually fairly substantial. Um, Ancient Evil, this one it changes the morale of the enemy. This one in through here, the Soul Harvest, um, increases the damage of the target Drakari allied unit and grants influence um, when this unit kills an enemy. So we can sort of buff a unit up uh, with that one through there um, so we end up with getting a, a little bit more experience once, once we do that one so this is a good support unit these units are not fighting units none of the heroes actually are so don't worry about those so much uh, cable light warriors as i sort of said before we'll have a look at these in more detail they just got like poison weapons but we'll have a look at that when we actually get some fighting done uh, as i said before the scourges are a good choice Things, for example, like the Raiders. This is a this is a transport cutter. We can have up to three different uh, cargo slots in through there. But a Scourge has got this bulky. It requires an extra cargo slot. So we have to have at least two cargo slots in a in a in a cargo in a transport to be able to uh, bring uh, these uh, Scourges through to be able to then sort of do the, their anti-tank type type attacks. They're very specialized units, all of the actual units in through here. Anyway, let's uh, get rid of this, but this is how you can do a bit of an evaluation. Hover over things, you know, what does it actually then go and do? Actually, I might as well show you this while we're here. The Haywire, Haywire Blaster, when you have a bit of a look down through there, you can see its armor penetration is only two, which is really, really bad for an anti-tank unit. You sort of typically would have like six plus, like maybe eight uh, armor penetration typically. But look at their traits, Haywire. Increases damage by three and ignores armor against vehicles and fortifications, which means that the armor might as well be zero for a vehicle or fortification. This is why they're so good. But if it's infantry that's heavily armored, we're gonna struggle against, uh, against heavily armored infantry. Infantry. But if it's vehicles, we're going to be we're going to be able to do fairly well with these scourges. So I like the scourges just mixed in with the basic old cableite warriors. What they actually have is they've got poison, and so even though they do terrible damage at only 0.5 damage and no real armor penetration against infantry, so increases damage against infantry and monstrous creature units by 0.25 damage plus one per po po per poison rank above one. So Poison one here is, is uh, sorry, poison two is what we actually have, which means we end up doing like a 0.275, uh, I think it is, per attack, which is actually up there. Plus we then actually have the rapid fire, which doubles the attacks at half range. So these are good units. They're just not very strong. That's the, uh, the like in terms of their uh, armor and hit points. They don't rate anywhere near like a Space Marine would, for example. So, but they're um, for what, you know, so... For what we need to do, we just need to have lots and lots of them to come in, do their raids because they move very quickly, get in, do the damage, move back the ones that are still alive and, and needing needing attention and bring another wave in. That's sort of like we are raiders and it does play in a very much a raider fashion. All right, that's the compendium. Uh, we've just moved those units off. I'm going to pause this now until we actually get to the next important aspect of what we're going to be doing. I've sort of I've told you the plan. I'll come back when we're a few, a fair few turns in, hopefully, and I will have expanded a little bit um, and prepared the ground. Right, we're turn three. Uh, I've got this slot now built, so we can now start to sort of build something. The first building we're going to be building is the laboratory, just so we can move quickly through to get to the next, the next uh, city. Now, we know that we want to go to here, so I will be wanting to move up to here at some point, getting closer to turn 20, just to make sure I can secure this. Anyway, that's all we need to do. Okay, so look, we're at turn 14 at the moment. I've just ordered this one to go and, and open this one up so we can actually start to go and mine some ore there at 40%. I think that's a good one. Uh, we do have 30% there, actually. That probably would be even... That would have probably been okay. Uh, yeah, it's either one, really. Um, we do have other production out here, ultimately. So uh, we now got to 
plan ahead a little bit because uh, we have now got the uh, Dark Foundry. The Venoms are really, really good. They're cheap at 1.5 upkeep, but they do cost me 30 ore to build. I've got 94. That's going to get, take it back down to 64 at this point in time. So I've got 64 left over. I've still got one turn before the Cage Den comes in. So I'll have this one done in one turn, and then we're going to have the, the Raider Fortress, which will be a... It says about five turns for that one through there. So we're going to certainly be able to have a, a lot of things built up by the time we end up needing to make use of the next lot of ore that we have. And this is where we have to start thinking in terms of how much ore have we got, how much influence have we got. So when we go to found our first Raider Fortress, I think it's 45 and 45. 45 ore, 45 influence to build the first one. The second one is then 90, and then the second one after that is 180. So, sorry, the, the, the fourth one. So the second one is going to be 45s, which we'd have enough in both these instances. Our influence is not that great, so we do want to get the city as early as we can to then build up the influence. So that's sort of where we are in terms of just planning ahead. At this stage, I can afford to get the Venom. Definitely get them. Uh, these are great little units, particularly uh, and very, very good support for your basic infantry, for your warrior units. So we'll grab one of those. It's going to take five turns, which is going to be about the same amount of time as it's going to take for the, uh, for the research. Right, well, we've now got, we're at turn 20, uh, we've just got the found the Raider Fortress, which allows us to found new cities on claimed webway gates. So we've got a fair bit of uh, ore, uh, we've got 86 at this point in time, we're getting plus 20 now, which is reasonable. We're going to need to get a lot more ore coming in though, we're going to be going through ore very, very quickly now. Uh, influence is okay as well. We're okay for this first city, we're not okay for the next city after this, so we'll have to sort of build up a little bit, but we'll get there. So we'll just click on OK. Um, now, we do actually also then have our first Venom has just come through. I'm going to start to load troops onto the Venoms. So this one here, I'm just going to go, this one's injured. In fact, let's just do the, let's just claim the city to start with. So I'll go through the process of doing this. So we've now got three, we've got activate webway gate. So it activates and claims a neutral webway gate. And then we've got found the Raider Fortress. And so it founds a city on a claimed webway gate. So this one, actually this one requires 60 and 60. Actually, so it is different depending on the size of the map. Okay, some, some of the map sizes, are, it's 45. In this case, it's 60. So uh, we didn't know what it was going to be, but this is going to make it sort of fairly tight for our ore. But we've still got enough. So this is ideal. Now 10 to, to claim it. So we just go and click on this one here activate and then we just claim that particular webway so we now have claimed this particular one uh, which means we can now go through it as like it's now our webway gate but we now want to actually found a way to raid a fortress at this location as well which is going to then chew up the 60 60 now the next one's going to be 120 so just be aware it's always going to double so when we go to the next one we're going to say have to need to save up a lot of ore so we don't want to be building too many other types of um, of units or anything like this. We don't want to be building. We want don't want to be spending ore without having a good reason to now, because we do want to get our third city up and running as fast as we can as well. Though like certainly within ten turns, if we can do it. So we've now claimed that city. Um, we've still got all three of these these in through here. We've got a unit that's now. We now can see things with the webway city, so we can sort of see beyond where we were. Um, I'm going to try to keep this one healing up. I can heal them up on the uh, on the transports. We've got one cargo transport in through here. I think what we'll do is we will move um, we'll move this one on board and move this one up just so we can sort of do a bit more scouting. But I'll st I'll stay inside the ruins. We're seeing other areas up up above now. So we're going to clear out the area around the city. Now, one, two, three. Yep, we have enough there to um, to get a bit more experience coming back in through there. Let's just go and heal this one up where it is. Um, now, the uh, order of the cities, we've got this city in through here. Now, this one here is going to give us plus two influence and then 20% influence. Now, we want to get, we do want to get influence from here. We need to get more ore as well down in through this other location. Ultimately, we've got another uh, we've got another vehicle coming down through this side as well. But we now actually have the two different cities. 
So the first thing we need to do is go and claim another tile. We are doing okay with food now with this one as well. We want it sort of like a fairly generic sort of tile. Um, these are both influence tiles. This one here is, well, both of these are fairly generic, although they do give us food. Hmm, I might claim this one here for my generic stuff or, or and or the, um, the influence. So let's just go that way there and we can start to sort of build things up. Choose research. So we've now got this one. We now are going to be needing to get uh, loyalty. So we're going to go and grab the cult arena. It's going to be the next thing we then go and do. And that's pretty much all we have to do initially now that we've got our second city. I'll come back. Again, we now need to save up for 120 in both of these. And so we, we don't want to be building any, we don't want to be wasting any more ore. Now, as we build new buildings, that's going to then chew up the ore anyway. So we, we have to be a little bit judicious about how we do things. It's going to be a bit of a balancing act. And we then have to plan where we want to go next as well. Um, we, well, I'll look at that when it's time. Anyway, I'll pause again. I'll just show you this actually while it's coming in. These are pox walkers that have come in. They're not doing much damage against my Phantom. I think I'll just talk a little bit about the, the combination of infantry and vehicles that the, uh, particularly the transports we actually end up having. So um, there's a cult arena. I'll just leave that one come through. So this is actually now our turn. So we've got a unit here which is still actually healing up. Now, again, I've got the poison attacks in through here which would do 3.4. The Venom has got like two different types of weapons. It's got a splinter cannon, which does again 0.5. It's got the poison three. So it does actually even more damage against these type of units. It's also salvo, so halves attack range if the unit has moved. Now, if we don't move, we know that we can defend very, very well because these guys don't have very good armor penetration. They've got zero armor penetration, which means that going up against a Venom with six armor is actually going to be difficult for them. So these are exactly the sort of units that the Venom, and we actually still have our uh, Cablelite Warrior on board as well. So the combination of these two units can do an awful lot. So let's see if we can kill off one of these, and then we'll go after the other one. Now, this one's going to be by far the easiest one. You can see there, we've got 12.4 there with just the um, with just the Venom itself. This one here is only doing 8.7, but we probably will be able to get rid of this one. Let's just go for it. So let's just go and uh, hit this one with the Venom. So again, this is mainly going to be not so much the twin-linked uh, uh, splinter rifle. Actually, that's poison as well. Yeah, so increases accuracy by two. It's just twin link rapid fire, doubles attacks at half range. So we've got these are really, really good little skimmer units. If we can find a beach, we can then get out onto the water as well. So we don't, we don't actually don't have one. This is all cliff all the way along here. So I don't think we've got a way off. It looks like it's all cliff through there as well. I would assume um, we haven't we haven't seen down there yet. Anyway, let's uh, let's go after this unit here. This one's got protection because it's in the ruins. And then we're going to take this unit out. The Cablelite Warriors can now move across as well. So they've also got their poison weapons. 8.2. This one's good enough to take up. So I'll just move this one up into this other location. So we've now got this one surrounded. It's not really going to be able to go anywhere. So we'll kill that one off. But these are the combination of these. Now... Another reason that you want to be starting to sort of have like transports for all of your infantry ultimately is because A, the, the actual upkeep is just so cheap on these units at 1.5 upkeep, but also the, um, uh, the ultimately you get benefits. And so if we go and have a look at our, in fact, we're up to research right now. So let's have a quick look. There's certain things like, for example, like the Raider is an important one for us to try to get, but also the Scourges are as well. I think, which way should we do it? We haven't really got anything, any way to build infantry just yet. We will get that one fairly soon. This is swollen with sin as well. Getting the tile acquisition radius will give us a lot more choice. So I think we might go there for this next bit of it. So we'll, we'll, again, just focusing on the on the uh, on the economy initially. So we'll go that way. But what you end up with having is as you go further down, you've got raider readiness. So it increases the healing rate of infantry units embarked in transports. So we can heal while on the transports themselves. We do want to go and grab this raider transport. I would ignore the Reavers, anti-armor skirmisher jet, jet bike unit. They're just too weak. So they're anti-armor, but if you go with the, um, the Scourges, they're a better unit. 
Uh, they certainly do a lot more. But you've got these other different sort of like radar type aspects to them, like radar evasion, for example, increases the invulnerability damage reduction of infantry, Drakari units, when they disembark from transport. So it actually gives them a bonus to, um, to protect themselves when they come off their transports. And this is exactly how the faction should be played with having like every single um you know every single infantry unit on board an actual one of these little raider transports and the raider transports are very very good in terms of the damage that they do and also the um the armor that they've got is is certainly good for for the for the price of the unit so it's, it just means you need a lot of them to be able to then do things, but it works very, very well. Anyway, that's. Uh, I thought I'd just quickly just talk a little bit about this combination. So we've come off now to sort of start to do this one. We've got another one on its way very, very soon, back in through here, another, another next turn. We'll then pick that one up. All right, so now it's uh, turn 29. So as I said, we were aiming for about turn 30 to establish our next city. I'll just go Control Z and just see what we've got. We do have a bit of production in around here, a bit of influence out that way, which isn't going to matter that much, but a little bit there. Um, it's mainly going to be very similar to this city, our original city back in through this other side. Uh, we do have a bit of ore in through there as well. If we go up to this one, we do have energy, which we will be needing. You can see we're on zero at the moment. Um, we could take that one. We've got the the army is, is basically in through here. I want to be close to wherever we end up going. I've also got another one down here as well that I could claim. Again, more ore. I think we'll actually go up. So I'll make this the, um, like we'll sort of end up finishing this off fairly soon, but I think we'll go with the energy city, which means we're gonna to have to go and bypass all of this. Um, we, and we do actually have some large uh, some large things in through here. Now what we do is when we, when we claim this one, you can see I've got just enough if I go to this one here, this one's going to cost 120 or 120 um, influence. And I've got enough for that. I also have the 10 required to activate the webway gate. So let's go and activate the gate and just see what we're dealing with. Good. There's nothing else around it. That's good. So, uh, so we will actually claim this now as a city and then we'll just go up and protect it. And we'll just make sure that, we've, that our forces are nearby to be able to then go and deal with it. So we'll deal with the Katachan Devil, the the, uh, the, the large um, uh, centipede type creatures. So we'll just go across Found Raider Fortress. This will be our third fortress now. There we go. I've got a few other little things, but nothing much in, in around us that we have to really concern ourselves with. But we're now down to very, very low limit, uh, levels of influence. The ore has got a good income. We've now got energy coming back in as well, but we do have very, very poor loyalty. So we need to sort of now start to, I guess, go into the middle phase of the game. We've got Scourges coming in two turns. I would like to show, um, I might just keep on playing until we've actually got a, something we can then use the Scourges against, so you can sort of see what that does look like. I don't know if we can see what this one's got. That has got, it's just a fortification. It does have six armor, which is a bit of a problem for us. Um, it doesn't actually fire back, but it does spawn more of these. So let's just go and, and grab these units and bring them up. So if I take this one up into here, you'll sort of see the difference. Now, poison isn't going to affect this one. We do 1.1 damage there. Against this one, we do 0.8. So it's not that great. Let's focus on this with this unit. And we will then just take the cable light warriors out. There's nowhere I can protect them, really. And we can do big damage against the Katachan Devil. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to do much in here. I'll bring this one up to this other side. Okay, we'll go. Oh, these will be good. This will show a little bit about what we can actually get up to with the, uh, with the Scourge units. Um, and when we get the scourges, I do want to go back for the for the uh, assault transports. So we'll just hit this one a little bit. You can see we're hardly doing any damage against something that's organic, that's not organic, like not a soldier. Bring these across and hit this one. Again, the poison weapons do amazing damage in through here. So we'll just uh, order the cities. Uh, in this case, 
all I can afford to do is just acquire another tile. Now if I go into there, we end up with getting extra food. Food is not a problem. Really, probably energy is going to be something we're going to need, although we've even got a little bit of that as well. I'll go with the, we've only got 20% energies all the way around. I'll just go to here, we can start to build the um, the loyalty buildings, etc, etc. So we now need to just start to build up and, and build our cities up effectively. All right, we'll end our turn. Those don't tend to get aggressive until you get aggressive. Again, we're going to be able to do good damage with our poison weapons there. Now, I, I will show the... Um, I'll, I'll bring this thing down. So you can see there with these guys here, they do 2.6, 2 which is nothing at all because of this damage that they do. But this is actually a building. I think it's classified as a building. Maybe it's not. It is a fortification. If we have a look at the, uh, the at this uh, haywire grenade. Uh, so this one is uh, haywire. Increases damage by three and ignores armor against vehicles and fortifications. So this is actually, this is exactly what these are for. So if we go and grab the haywire grenade, you can see there it does 16.5 because the armor that it's got, the six armor from the fortification goes down to zero. So we'll throw that in. These don't have anything anything like that. These are not good against against anything armoured. But both of these with their haywire grenades do a lot of damage. Then we've got a 10 turn cooldown. So before we go after these, we're going to be wanting to get scourges to come after these two these two locations back out through here. Uh, these can still chase down the Katachan Devil wherever it went. I didn't see where it got to. Um, let's move on up. Actually, I, should, I shouldn't be. I shouldn't go too close to this. I shall claim that, and I'll just get the support in through this other side as well. I think that I think that the uh, the creature is out on on in this area somewhere. I don't know how it can get up. We haven't found a beachhead anywhere. So uh, there's, uh, there's going to be more robots in here. Okay, this is actually getting into a new phase. I will play a bit further on because the scourges are great against the robots. This is a, this is a cybernetic a data smith, and it means it will actually have robots with it. Um, and so our, none of our units are good against the robots. So we have to be, uh, the only one that is is the actual scourge unit that we're actually building. So it will actually, uh, I'll leave this where this is. I'm not going to bother going after these Sinunan at this stage. So I'll just skip, and um, I'll come back when we've actually got the scourges out, out on board. Actually, this is really interesting. We've actually come across the Craftworld Eldari, the actual good elves. <laughs> the dark elves, this is the good elves. These are sort of like our arch enemy. And so you can see down through the it says, Oh no, it's our sanctimonious cousins, the ones who got all moral. Uh, keep to the shadows and maybe they'll scuttle away. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually finish this episode here. And uh, I'm going to play another episode. I'm going to actually play the war out to try to destroy these units. And so I'll just go through the process of how we're going to do that uh, in the next episode. Uh, but I'll just do a bit of a summary as to where we've got to. We're basically at turn 40 now. So we're into the middle of the game. Uh, we, don't, we don't have a very strong army at this stage. We do have to build up an, a strong army. And I'm starting to prepare for that now. So let's just, I'll just go and click on OK. Uh, we've just got Raider Readiness, which allows us to heal up now on the transports. So transports will now become even more important to us. Just click on OK. Um, so we're sort of up here. It's, this is near our City of Torment that we had built uh, at the end there. Uh, let's just make, let me go through the main cities. So our, our first city that we actually have, if we just go and click on this one, you can sort of see that we're building a second of the uh, of the Dark Foundry, so we can actually output our... And I'm trying to build now the, the next Raider unit. So the Venom and the Raiders really are our, our uh, backbone to our actual vehicles. Um, and there is actually 
vehicles after this one also become quite powerful. But these really are the important ones for us in, in conjunction with our infantry. And so we're building another one of the uh, another one of the dark foundries back in through here. And we've also we've, I've built like two ore mines in through this other side to make sure that I've always got enough ore. So I'm, I'm getting on top of that one. I'm building influence buildings as well. I'm also building energy buildings back at the at that last city that we had established. I'm also trying to get on top of my loyalty as well at this point in time. So um, so with this one in mind, we just we want to get a raider. We want one raider for every one of the uh, one of the other infantry units. So I'm building the the raiders are being built in through here. Back up in through here though, this is actually where I'm building the scourges. So I've got a scourge being built in through here in three turns. I'm also building a second cableite stronghold so I can build them even faster because we really wanted to pump these out fairly quickly now. So what I'll do is I will come back um, in the next episode and, and, and gear up ready for the war. Now I'm nowhere near strong enough yet so we have a lot that we have to go and do. In terms of research, let's just go to our research now. Um, I'll be wanting to get across and get things for example like the Raider Evasion, I want to get the Ravager, uh, there's a fair few things in tier 6 that I would like to get. Uh, back in through this other side, I've got gross placed armor, so increase the armor of scourges. Again, the scourges are going to be very, very important to us. We've got night shields, increase the range damage reduction of raiders, ravagers. So all of the all of the different types, so we don't, it's not on the venom as such, but the raiders will end, end up getting uh, better range damage reduction. So I think we'll actually take that one. We might take that one now. Uh, and so we'll start to sort of, I'm now going to go back and try to build up ready for taking on the Eldar. So we'll just go OK there, ordering the units. Now, I don't want to tempt fate here just yet, so I'm just going to come back. This um, this robot just came down and claimed that. I'm just going to come back down and claim that one back because this is uh, loyalty for me. And I'm just going to keep these back out of the way. This one is still trying to heal up, I think. Yes, it's, I need to get this one healed. So I'll just move out of the way, allow these things to do what they're going to do, and then in the next episode we'll come back in and actually start to um, to play against those. Anyway, I will leave it here, guys. And uh, so I'll um, so I hope that's enough to at least get you into the mid mid game. Uh, we've we've got our objectives when we wanted them. So we've got the three cities now established, which is giving us fairly good income across the board now, without having to worry too much about it. And now we can focus on building up our armies. So I'll do that in the, in the next episode. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you then.